All right, so today I'm gonna learn how to do drum brakes. Never done those before. So off camera, I've replaced the front brakes on this, the caliper on, I think it was this side. Yeah, this side locked up and it was causing the brakes to wear just prematurely. Uh, so I replaced the caliper. I still need to bleed it. I, I bled a little, but I'm not 100% on it. So I gotta bleed a little. But in the meantime, let's jack it up and figure out how to do drum brakes. All right, I got it nice and high. Not too high, but enough to where I don't need to hurt my back too much to bend over. So let's take off these wheel covers and go from there. Oh, that's right. Uh, I stripped one of the lug nuts one time and this lug nut I had and it went on no problem. So that's why it's mismatched. Um, but I will say, I don't think the drum brakes are actually like worn out or bad or anything. It's just when I bought the kit for the front, it came with the rear ones. It wasn't too much more money for that. So since I have them, I'm just gonna replace them and learn how to do it. So I'm gonna get to use my new gun. This is the Harbor Freight Special, the Earthquake. Uh, this is their big one. Uh, it's like 1200 foot pounds of braking force or something like that. Um, I have this Bauer one that's corded, but this one's electric and it's supposed to be more powerful. So I'm excited to see this, see how to see it put to use and see if it performs well, especially since it's battery powered and I don't need to drag a wire everywhere. Um, but then it'll be interesting to see how the battery lasts over time. So let's get this off. Okay. I will say it fits in there pretty nicely. So let's go ahead and take this top one off. Nah, I should pop the wheel. Came out no problem. Gotta get used to it. Too bad. Okay, and then I just gotta whack this off. I have taken this off not too long ago, so it might come off pretty easy. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, so it only came off easy because I, I've taken it off like not even a hundred miles ago, just to see what they look like. Uh, but yeah, so they're not too bad. The other side I'm gonna ha have to hammer off, probably for sure. So I just sprayed it all down with brake cleaner, uh, just to get the loose particles out. But it looks like I'm gonna work on getting this hook spring out. Uh, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna pry it with flathead, push it out, and then see what happens. I've already taken a bunch of photos, so. Uh, if you're doing this, that's very important. Take a lot of photos, especially if you don't know what you're doing, like me. So using a flathead and a pliers, I knocked this loop out of there, and it was inside of that whole face, like this. I tried to do some Googling, figure out, like there's a video out there for this, but I don't really see anything useful really um, but basically this one's a lot different from other cars so I was hoping I could look at like the Chris Fix video and just go off that but for some reason these brakes are different um, so I already got that first spring off now it looks like I got to take off this little ring that goes all the way around now I don't know if it bolts in right there because I don't have a, it's like the inverse Torx, it's the E-bit. I don't have any of those, so I might have to pick it up if I need it. Um, but I know I can pry this out, so I think I'm going to pry this out, pry that side out, and then see if I can get this little clip out, which actually I might be able to pull out now, but yeah, so I know that stuff needs to come out, so I'm going to work on that. All right, well, as you can see, I got this unhooked. I've unhooked that. I've slid it around. It just won't budge. I'm pretty confident I need to remove this E-bolt, whatever it is. 
I don't have any of those sockets, so I'm gonna go around and pick up some of those sockets right now. After a trip to Harbor Freight, we got ourselves, let's see, this is the 8, the E8, external Torx 8. You can see the, the reverse of a Torx. And then let's go down here to this bolt. So this is the bolt I was trying to remove. I've already almost stripped it trying to use regular hex heads, but here we go. And now it comes loose. Perfect, so that's, this is what I needed for that. So I'm gonna take it out and then see what I, what needs to happen. All right, and I didn't show you any of this, um, but I got it all together. And you can see with all the scratches in there, this was a pain. Um, so I already showed you I had to buy that external Torx bit. Uh, I just finished getting it all self-aligned, so now I tested it, the brakes work, we're all good there. I'm just gonna spray down the inside of this with brake cleaner, and that'll be good for this driver's side. Um, but I'll show you more of what I actually had to do on the passenger side. Now that I know how it's done, it should go a lot smoother now. Uh, so here we are working on this passenger side. Uh, so you saw on the other one, it came off super easy because I've done it before. This one, it's on there pretty good. It's wiggling a bit. Um, so what you can do is just like spray WD-40 or anything like that. Just kind of break up that rust penetration stuff. Um, but I'm gonna try using a hammer. I really need to buy a actual like a mini sledgehammer, not just this cheap one that comes in the toolkits. Um, it doesn't matter if you mess this up because we're replacing it. Just gonna head it back and forth. So I've been going out this for a few minutes. Finally got some progress. You can see a nice gap right there. It's all wet because I just sprayed WD-40. I sprayed a bunch. So I sprayed it all around here and the studs. I whacked it a bunch. Um, so what's been working the best for me, I can't do it with two, with one hand, but I put my pry bar here and then I hit the back side of it with a hammer back here. So it just taps it out. And so I just been doing that and slowly it's been working its way out. All right, so you can see I brought out the angle grinder. <laughs> this big gem was giving me a hard time. It's been a little over an hour now, but I finally got it. Oh, cow, man, I had to cut this in multiple places. So first I cut off a little square sh section here and make sure I know how to do it. I did it on this side too, just to redo like retest it and then I cut all the way along and chopped it off finally um, so the only damage that came from using that angle grinder I, I did grind a bit of this down on accident just from frustration I nicked the whatever cylinder this thing is the master I don't know what it's called for brake drums but I nicked this and then I went into the pad here, but I'm replacing these, so I didn't really care over there. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's stuff that's been nicked. I'll file this stuff down, um, but it should be fine, totally fine still. But I can't believe how much of a struggle that was. Uh, I've never, I saw a few other people on YouTube suggest that this was an option so it was like a last case scenario and yeah so the problem was there was a lip that formed um, oh right on here you can actually see it really well so see how there's that red mark so that was a lip that formed it's just like rust corrosion stuff 
and I could not break it past it because it sat on the back side of the pad. So yeah, that was the whole problem, but it's off. So now let's get to actually re redoing these brake drums on this side. All right, so there's a spring here that I gotta pull off loose. I'm gonna try to do it. Just pile pliers and a screwdriver. Oh, my screwdriver's caked in metal still. I didn't think about that. Oh, I got it with just the pliers. Okay. Yeah, and then I'm just gonna set it down as it came out. Okay. Um, now there's this bar thingy that goes around as the only thing holding the brake pads in, really. Um, so I gotta get my E socket, my external torx, and then undo that. So once again, here's what that external torx bolt looks like. And just use a quarter inch. Just special, and it's down there at the bottom. All right, so now I gotta work on prying these arms out. Use my smaller pry bar. I don't remember exactly how I did it. So I'm gonna learn real quick. damage the HUD, the hub, too bad. All right, that side's free. That side's free also. So now it hooks in as like a hook on the bottom. So that's gonna take a little bit more work to get to. So right there, this is the back side of it. There's that C-clamp. Uh, it doesn't really look like much because it's filthy, but I'm gonna have to break that off and try not to actually break it so I can reuse it. All right, I got the braking pad off of the parking brake thingy. You can see the little clip here. Actually, I didn't damage it that much. So it just, you put the pad over and then you just slide it in over like a normal C-clamp. Um, so I'm gonna go do that with the new pads and then get started on assembling everything. All right, got the C-clip in. Now time for the annoying metal bar this bar that goes in there and secures all the brake pads so i started putting in the the side closest to the engine so you can see that bar has to go everything actually you can see this thing got pretty hot wow um but yeah it has to go all over this i gotta slide this up to make contact with this cylinder and then the hook needs to go down into this long hole so i got quite a ways to go you just kind of use a pry bar or use your hands if you're strong enough and just pull it and lift it up at the same time got this side on and then for this this is the star wheel the adjuster just the thing that self adjusts is to make sure that both pads are getting even wear um, i just set it like roughly in the middle it will kind of self adjust on its own at least I think that's what's going on. Um, but yeah, I just kind of set it in the middle, just kind of guess wherever I can get the drum break actually over the shoes, then that's right about middle or so, something like that. So then you just need to get this side on. And I know I gotta put this on before I hook up the shoe, otherwise I can't fit it. Learn that from experience, as in the other side. All right, I got all the brake shoes on. I even got the hardware clip. Let me get a light. Uh, even got that hardware clip and the spring. So you can see how everything connects. I tried cleaning everything just cause there's all that metal there from when I had to cut the drum, unfortunately. <laughs> but yeah, I cleaned it up as best I can with brake cleaner and a rag. And I don't see any metal. We should be good. Uh, I already fit on the brake shoe so it fits. So that's how you know you're good, because if they're not aligned, then it won't go on. It just won't. So I'm gonna put it on, tighten the wheel, make sure everything spins. 
I put on the wheel to demonstrate this better, but watch. So the pads are dragging. They're making contact as it's spinning. So I gotta take it off and realign stuff. As you can see, the car's out of the garage and it survived the test drive. I mean, it actually feels a whole lot better than it was before. Now, I, I went in knowing this rear drum brake, the pads weren't really that bad. And then we found out one of them got really hot and that brake drum was super hard to get off. Um, so I'm thinking this whole time, because there's always been a noise in the back. So this passenger side had the, the one close to the engine bay, the pad was stuck and it was just making this noise whenever you go to brake. Um, but now that noise is gone. The pedal feels great after fully bleeding it. We replaced the caliper on that side off the camera. Uh, it has whole new rotors and pads in the front. All new brake drums, brake shoes back there. So this is full on set with the new braking system and it actually works a whole lot better than I thought it would. All right. I got some cleanup to do. <laughs> it's a lot of brake dust. I'm gonna clean this up. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time with some exciting news.